In this video, I will talk about two undiscovered animals and three undiscovered plants. The first animal is Cadaver Aufuro, who did not survive the connection extinction event. Aufuro is a rather large 80s cup scavenger that survives in the colder regions of the cup. Aufuro is made up of eight muscular arms with tight red skin. These arms have small hooks similar to a velcro that can retract. These claws can both drag the animal around and rip meat off of carcasses. The meat is carried to the mouth located on top of the animal's head. This mouth has no teeth but Aofuro makes up for this by having extra strong stomach acid but also extra long intestines. Four large keratin plates surround the mouth colored a very pale cyan color to help Aofuro camouflage with the snow. To drink, Aofuro will bury its petals under the snow or wait for the snow to fall on its petals. Then heating them enough to melt the snow slowly and moving its petals up to make the water fall into its mouth. This makes Aofuro one of the only animals in the cup not to drink soda and only water. Aofuro finds food by simply finding animals who have wandered too far up the cup and froze, starved, or dehydrated to death and simply sitting on top carrying meat, organs, and other edible tissues to the mouth. To reproduce, Aofuro uses one arm to carry reproductive cells from one to the other. The female is avoviviparous, meaning that the eggs the female has are kept inside the body until the eggs are ready to hatch, at what point the female will lay her eggs under a corpse she finds and leave her between 15 to 20 children alone to survive. Due to the size of Aurofuro and the scarcity of food in its location, not only are Aurofuro cannibals, but they are also quite rare, being few and far between. Aurofuro is blind but can hear and smell. Aurofuro is extinct due to simply bad luck and a lack of population. The next animal is Silvosus lingua. Silvosus is a small terrestrial filter feeder from the 60s cup who survived the connection extinction event. Silvosus, just like Aofuro, lives in the upper reaches of its cup. Silvosus is a simple animal with a thick brown shell and a beige-colored tongue that collects both dust and snow to turn into water. Silvosus is immobile as adults stick to the ground with one large suction cup. But the babies are worm-like and move like worms too, using their tongue to catch dust and water. As the babies get about two weeks old, they start to grow their suction cup and attempt to find an optimal spot for growing. When they do find a spot that's good, they secrete an almost concrete-like fluid that freezes, becoming the hard outer shell. Most Silvosus babies end up freezing to death or occasionally getting eaten. But some make it to adulthood where they have no real predators thanks to their shells and cold climate. To reproduce, Silvosuses simply use broadcast spawning, releasing extra tough gametes into the air and hoping for the best. Although this species did take a hit thanks to the lost and confused animals wandering into their territory accidentally killing many, Silvosus has recovered and survived the connection extinction event. On to the plant, starting with Expeditus colmus. Colmus is a medium-sized 60s cup plant that survived the connection extinction event. Colmus on its own is not super special, having a lightish green stem and two branches with rusted thorns similar to Prostrum herbum, and a palish yellow leaf with four purple berries occasionally. But Colmus, if it receives too little soda, it will contract its roots and slip outside of its hole. And Colmus will add and subtract soda from its arms to cause them to move and allowing Colmus to have a simple form of walking. And without the limitations of bones, Colmus is able to move its arms in any direction it wants without moving its whole body. To re-root itself, Colmus will move its roots in a circular fashion to move the dust out of the way and after expanding its roots again. Colmus also can't re-root itself if there's too many roots in the way, which can help or kill Colmus. Colmus also only starts walking at night, but walking can easily last till day. Colmus has a high chance of dying from doing this, about 67% die if they have to walk. Walking is also not guaranteed, a Colmus might never have to walk in its lifetime. Colmus never suffered severe decreases in population thanks to the connection. 
The next plant is Homunculus, a small 60s cup aquatic plant who survived the connection extinction event. Homunculus is an aquatic plant with two more particular adaptations, one of which being the many holes in a Homunculus's stem. These holes are leftovers from their ancestors who survived in the deepest waters, or sodas, I guess. And these holes would help them collect more oxygen in the deeper locations. These holes still do collect more oxygen, but thanks to Homunculus living in shallow rivers and ponds, these are not needed. The second particular adaptation is the two root strands that always poke out of the ground. These both also helped collect oxygen, but also used to collect a small amount of detritus and would digest it to get nitrogen. Other adaptations include that Homunculus is one of the smallest plants besides Folium, Brevis Herbae, and Arium Folium. The leaves of Homunculus vary in chlorophyll, the top one having the most and the bottom one having the least. Although Homunculus has changed in size and can no longer digest food like its ancestors, it's almost the exact same, almost smaller. Homunculus did almost go extinct due to the fight between Carnoradix and Basiferflorus, but with some good luck, it survived the connection extinction event. The final organism is Polustri stondo, a 60s cup organism who went extinct thanks to the connection and is a similar size to Cerulum folium. Paulustri is a plant that only grows besides large permanent bodies of soda. Paulustri is a relative of Homunculus and is adapted to live in swamps that although did appear after the connection, before in the 60s cup swamps were not yet a thing. Due to this and the fact that Paulustri is quite a soft plant similar to Calium muscus, making it a target for herbivores and parasites, its numbers have always been low but manageable. The top of Paulustri has a hole in the center that releases spores. Paulustri is extinct due to the connection introducing Titanus chymex grazing on the soft body of Paulustri that was just like the Calium folium they were used to, and introducing the 80s cup plants. And that's all for this episode of Speculative Biology Inside a McDonald's Cup.